From the Lineweaver Wealth Watch Center, this is the Financial Quarterback. I'm Jim Lineweaver, your financial quarterback since 1993. Today we're going to talk about the possibility of a recession, what that means for the financial markets, and most importantly, what that means for your portfolio. So here to help me address this topic is Charter Financial Analyst and the head of our investment committee, Jerry Herman. So, Jerry, what are the chances of a recession developing this year? Well, there's a lot of concern about hiking interest rates tipping the economy into recession. And in 10 of the last 11 interest rate hike cycles, it actually led to a recession. Only once was the Fed able to navigate the perfect soft landing. And in five instances, the recession was severe. Yeah, and one of the indicators that I know economists look at is this inverted yield curve. So maybe you can explain a little bit more about what that is. Yeah. The definition of an inverted yield curve is when interest rates are on, on three-month Treasury bills are actually higher than on 10-year Treasury bonds. Under normal circumstances, the long bond has a higher rate, but when the short bond has higher rates, it signals a higher level of risk near term and less robust prospects for the future. The inverted yield curve has occurred four times since 1982, and each time it was followed by a recession. So it's no wonder that there's talk about the possibility of a recession. Yeah, but it's important to distinguish between an economic cycle and a stock market cycle. So the financial markets tend to peak before the economy does, and also bottoms before the economy recovers. So 2022 is a good example. The market's anticipating an economic slowdown, resulting in a very challenging year for both stocks and bonds. Yep. Let's look back to 1929 and see how the market does during recessions. There's a lot of variability in the data, but on average, stocks are up about 1% during a recession. They were down as much as 34% in 1929, up as much as 24% in 1954. So there's variability in the data. One month, one year after a recession, stocks are up on average at 24.5%. So st the market does better after a recession. Yeah, I know another major concern is the inflation that's out there. It's the highest it's been since 1980. So how long are we going to have to live with this inflation? So in the 1980s, it took more than three years to reach the peak and more than three years to come back down below 3%. But again, if we go back over long history, on average, it takes about 18 months to get to below 3%. Inflation hit 9% in June of last year, so maybe there's some hope that we can get to 3% by the end of the year. Once again, after inflation peaks, the market does pretty well. Historically, it's up about 18% over the following year, and the bond market's up about 8%. Through June, we're about in line with those averages for the S&P. Jerry, thanks a lot for that great information. If you have questions about how to prepare your portfolio for recession, we're here to help. We can help with testing, spend some time looking at investments that historically do well during a recession and inflationary periods. So if you'd like us to review your portfolio or even if you just want a second opinion, give us a call. Here's Fox News Sunday.